So it's 2022 and the idea of Japan reopening for tourists this summer has started to become more and more of a topic that people are talking about. And after waiting two long years for Japan to finally reopen to tourists, you might think that I would be very excited at the idea of being able to finally get back to Japan. But unfortunately, I just don't really feel very interested in going to Japan right now. Two years is quite a long time, and over the course of two years, I feel like I've changed quite a lot as a person. The things I feel interested in has taken a dramatic shift over the past two years, and I think that might be quite understandable for most people. Most people don't have the same interests or hobbies for their entire lives, and as the years go on, we mature and grow as people, and so do our interests. So as many of you may know, for most of my adult life, I've been very obsessed with Japan and the idea of living in Japan and dating a Japanese woman. But now when I think of the idea of going back to Japan and living there semi long term for a few months, the idea just kind of bores me because I can kind of imagine what's going to happen. I'll go there, I'll get some kind of apartment, hotel, and then I'll just sit around in the hotel feeling pretty bored. I might get some dates on dating apps and then I'll go on dates, but these dates are probably going to be pretty rubbish and not really up to my standards. I won't really feel attracted to any of the women I get dates with, and it'll just be, in general, pretty lacking in luster and dull. Six months will go by, which is the longest amount of time I can stay as a tourist, and I would have wasted all that money on apartments and hotels and food and stuff. And after the six months is over, I'll have to leave Japan, and I basically would have achieved pretty much nothing during those six months unless I somehow managed to get a visa by getting married again, which is probably going to be very unlikely. I just look back at all the times I went to Japan, all of the trips, all of the months I spent in Japan, just messing around with women and going dating and going to restaurants and meeting people, and sure it was fun at the time and sure I made some nice memories, but in the end it didn't really amount to anything that's helping me right now in this very moment. I could have spent that time or money learning new skills, gaining new qualifications or certificates, but instead of getting new skills I just got chlamydia and divorced. I think the idea of settling down in England and just living in England long term really scared me for a very long time. And the idea of running away to a cool country like Japan always seemed more magical and interesting to me as a young adult. But now in my 30s, I'm starting to rethink a lot of things. I'm starting to think that maybe I could get more happiness and fulfillment in life if I just stayed put in one country, my own country, which is the easiest country to stay in to do stuff since I speak the language and I don't have any problems with visas. The main appeal of Japan for me when I was younger was Japanese women. I kind of had this obsession, maybe even a fetish you could say, for Japanese girls and Japanese women, but as of right now I kind of lost all interest in Japanese women, and kind of just women in general have been very uninteresting to me recently, and I feel kind of bored with all the dating stuff and the relationship stuff, I want to do something else in life. I don't even know why I was so obsessed with Japanese women, I think it was because of all of the anime I watched, where the girls look really cute, and they look really fun to be with, and I thought they would just make perfect girlfriends, and that was the kind of girl that I wanted to be with. But then I went to Japan and I realized that real life people don't really look as beautiful and pretty as anime characters or even as act actresses in TV shows do. I mean, some of the girls over there are very pretty and very attractive, but let's face it, they won't ever be interested in a guy like me. And the vast majority of people over in Japan are just kind of either average or very unattractive. It's the same as any other country. It doesn't matter which country you go to, there's going to be a small percentage percentage of very attractive people who won't give a damn about you unless you're also very attractive, which I'm not and you probably aren't either. And after experiencing several relationships with fairly moderately attractive Japanese women and some very unattractive ones and some very old and ugly fat ones, I have to say that in conclusion, None of the relationships were very great, that's why they all ended. There's not even one relationship that I had with a Japanese girlfriend that I actually regret losing or that I miss being with. They all just kind of sucked and I preferred being alone instead of being in them. I tried so hard to make this dream of dating perfect Japanese anime girls come true and become a reality. And after all my sacrifices and all of my efforts studying Japanese and studying the Japanese culture and trying to find out how I could move there, all of it was all in vain and didn't really matter because in the end it was all just a waste of time. I think the problem is if you're feeling bored and you don't know what to do in life, 
Just moving to Japan is not really going to fix the problems. Sure, in the beginning it will be exciting because everything's fresh and new and you're with someone new and you can go on cute dates. But when the honeymoon phase is over, and it will be over fairly soon, you'll just be back to feeling bored and you don't know what to do in life anymore. And that's exactly what happened to me. After getting married and settling down in Japan, I just started to feel bored and didn't know what to do anymore again. Dating a Japanese woman is also kind of boring because number one, if they don't speak good English then you have to speak in Japanese all the time, which wasn't really too much of a problem to me since I passed level 2 of the JLPT and I nearly passed level 1, so my Japanese was up to a fairly decent standard. But still, even for me, I started to get very tired and exhausted having to communicate in Japanese all the time. Also, Japanese women have no idea or knowledge about meme culture or internet stuff or trending popular topics that might be trending and popular in the West. So good luck having any kind of conversations about Elon Musk buying Twitter or the Will Smith slap thing with Japanese people because they probably won't have any idea what you're talking about or they won't even care in the first place. So after you get bored of the bedtime activities, which you will get bored of pretty soon because Japanese women aren't that exciting or adventurous in the sack, then there's not really much else to keep you stimulated emotionally or intellectually. What are you going to talk about? I guess you could talk about how sunny it is and how cute little bunny rabbits across the road are. In almost every relationship I had in Japan, I just started to get really bored after a few months and I would start going to see different women and then cheating and then coming back home and didn't really care if the relationships blew up and ended. So if I'm not really feeling very interested in Japanese women anymore, what is the point of going to Japan? That's basically the main appeal point of going to Japan is for the women. I guess there's also the food and the culture, but you can get Japanese food anywhere in the world. If I want to eat sushi or ramen, I can just go on to Uber Eats and there's a lot of restaurants that sell Japanese food. You don't need to go all the way to Japan to eat Japanese food. And the culture stuff, I don't really care much about that. Now that I don't really care much about the women either, I just don't really see much point or appeal in going to Japan because what would I do when I get there? And right now, I'm just really enjoying learning to drive. It's been such a long time since I really dedicated myself to learning a new skill and it's very challenging but I've had about six lessons so far, two hours each, so about 12 hours of driving lessons I've had so far and I'm actually really enjoying operating the car and driving it around town and doing the different maneuvers and it's actually been a great learning experience and I can't wait to be able to get my driving license and then start getting into the world of cars. And I think I've really changed the way I think when it comes to challenges and trying to do difficult things. It all started when I was playing Elden Ring, a game that I thought I would never like and I thought I'd really hate it. But after playing Elden Ring and getting really addicted to it, I started to learn the joy of doing something difficult and even if it takes you 600 times to take down a boss, when you eventually get better and better and you finally get to take down that boss and you get that sweet XP and gear, it feels so great overcoming a challenge and I think that's really shifted my way of thinking when it comes to taking on difficult tasks which in the past I would just avoid doing. I would just avoid anything that's difficult and then find a way around it so I wouldn't have to learn anything new. In the past I had such a bad mentality where if anything became too difficult I would just give up and then I would start creating all of these excuses to justify giving up. When I first took driving lessons when I was 18 Every time it's got really difficult, I just thought, oh my god, I can't do this, I'm going to give up, this is a waste of time. But now I'm embracing the challenge in true Elden Ring fashion. If there's something difficult, I'll just keep trying and trying until I get better and better, and I can see the improvements. For example, I used to be so scared of the clutch in a car, in a manual transmission car. I used to be so scared of stalling it and feeling embarrassed at traffic lights when the engine cuts out, but I'm getting really good at the clutch. After all these lessons, practicing clutch control. I feel like I'm really getting the hang of it and you should have seen me yesterday. I was using perfect clutch control going up this hill in traffic and I was slowing down and slightly speeding up just by using tiny little adjustments on the clutch, pressing it down slightly, lifting it up slightly and it just felt really satisfying to finally get good at something that I was very scared of in the past. So in conclusion, now that I don't really feel very interested in dating Japanese women anymore, I also don't really feel very interested in just going to Japan and sitting around doing nothing like 
I used to. I'd rather spend my time and my money trying to learn some kind of new skill that I really want to become good at. For now, that would be driving. And then after driving, I guess I have to find something new to challenge myself with. And that's basically life, isn't it? You just keep doing one challenge after the next challenge, after the next one to keep yourself stimulated. If you don't have anything to do that challenges you, that's difficult, that you really want to do, then you just become really bored because there's no obstacles to try and take down. You just feel like there's nothing to do all day. You don't know what to do with your life anymore. I guess you could say after getting married to a Japanese woman and sleeping with men, I don't really feel like that's a challenge that I care much about anymore. I guess you could say I feel like I've conquered Japanese women. And I want to go into something else now. 